so we saw those magnificent color pictures from the moon and found that the moon apparently is not quite black and white after all, but is sort of a brownish gray, and there is quite a bit of definition more to be seen in, in color pictures than there were in the black and white pictures we saw from Apollo 8 last December. We saw clearly what uh, the astronauts have been talking about since they arrived there at the moon at 4.30 roughly this afternoon and talking about how rugged that planet is. You have to see this planet to believe it, they have said, and now the millions and the billions of us around the world have had the privilege of sharing it with them. At the risk of sounding corny, Stafford said earlier, uh, this view is out of this world, and now we too can confirm that. We can also confirm uh, that what uh, Stafford had said earlier is certainly true, that it's going to be a real trick to go down among those mountains tomorrow. And that uh, is the trick that Tom Stafford and Eugene Cernan have to pull off for their own safety and for the future of manned space exploration of the moon and the flight of Apollo 11 scheduled for July. They are scheduled now, Eugene Cernan, to climb down into the lunar module in another 25 minutes or so to spend two hours there checking out its systems. Tomorrow, uh, they, after eight hours sleep tonight, they, uh, Stafford and Cernan, go back into that lunar module, and then at 2.58 p.m., they undock. That's Eastern Daylight Time, uh, give or take a few minutes. They leave the command module. They uh, will give us some television uh, from the command module where John Young stays behind uh, to uh, show us that undocked lem out there immediately after they have undocked. They begin their descent uh, into the, their uh, lunar orbit at 423, and they reach that 10-mile point at 535. They reach it again at 732 and redock at 1108 tomorrow night. It's going to be an exciting night, and of course, CBS News will be covering all of those details. This is Walter Cronkite at the CBS News Space Center, New York. This has been a CBS News special report, The Flight of Apollo 10. This is a CBS News special report, The Flight of Apollo 10. Reporting from the CBS News Apollo headquarters in New York, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good afternoon. Apollo 10 is now on the far side of the moon on its 12th revolution of the lunar body. And uh, this is the uh, critical time behind the moon, because at this time, the two spacecraft should be separating, undocking for the trip Stafford and Cernan will make on uh, a subsequent pass within 10 miles of the surface of the moon, the landing site for Apollo 11 in July. But there has been some trouble aboard the spacecraft, and now at Mission Control in Houston, they're waiting anxiously for the men to reacquire the signal as they come around to the near side of the moon uh, some 13 minutes from now to report on whether they have indeed undocked and whether this mission is to be a complete success or not. The trouble has been in uh, pressurizing, depressurizing the tunnel between the command module and the lunar module. That trouble developed a couple of hours ago. They worked out what they thought was a solution, and then just before they lost a signal to the Earth, it turned out that there was a little more problem than they thought at first because the two spacecraft were not staying firmly docked as had been uh, has been planned, but instead there was some pressure on the docking rings and the Houston control people didn't like that a bit. So they said if that did not get any worse or much worse, they could go ahead and undock, but to watch it closely. Perhaps we could go out to Downey, California, to North American Rockwell, where the command module is built and where their test engineer, Leo Krupp, is standing by, and he can tell us just what the problem is. Leo? Uh, yes, sir, Walter. The problem has been that John Young was unable to vent the pressure out of the tunnel after uh, Stafford and Cernan entered the, the lunar module. Uh, the problem basically is, is that when the two pilots are in the lunar module and John Young is in the command module, the two pressure hatches are reinstalled. And then if the tunnel has pressure in it, it's tending to force the two vehicles apart. And at this time, the only thing holding the two vehicles together in a dock configuration is the the docking probe, which is preloaded, to pull the two vehicles together. But with the pressure in there, tending to force the two vehicles apart, there's insufficient coefficient of friction between the two docking rings of the lunar module and the command module to prevent 
the two vehicles from shifting orientation should any uh, roll maneuvers be performed in either vehicle. And uh, this is obviously what has happened because uh, unable to vent the tunnel down to zero pressure, uh, the coefficient of friction has been low. And I believe the last report from, uh, from mission uh, control has been that the orientation has changed three degrees since they originally docked uh, uh, on transposition and docking. And I also understand that uh, they have set a limit of six degrees when they come out the, the other side of the moon here. If they have not shifted more than six degrees, they'll be given a, an okay to undock. Now, the concern here is strictly a structural concern. Uh, we could undock uh, at any slippage angle. The problem is the fact that the two vehicles are slipping, we're putting a load on the, on the docking system, on the, on the uh, docking probe, so there will be some concern if we slip past six degrees as to whether uh, we have overstressed the probe system or not. As I understand it, Walter, uh, Leo was just uh, filling me in on some of this. The question is not so much undocking right now as possible damage that might be done these latches and might jeopardize the return when they bring the two back together after Lem's scheduled trips down close to the surface of the moon. Is that right, Leo? Uh, that's right, Bill, and I'm sure the NASA engineers at, at Houston are looking into this very carefully. At the same time, the North American engineers here at Downey are looking into this, and uh, the decision will be made as soon as communications is reestablished and we know whether there's been further slippage, whether it'll be a safe configuration for undocking. And, of course, the big questions, Walter, are what this kind of problem might do to the rest of this mission and, conceivably, what it might do to the plans for Apollo 11 in July. Well, now, uh, let's, let's get something straight here, uh, Leo. Uh, as I understood Mission Control a moment ago, uh, they have, uh, this, this is the orbit, uh, the revolution of the moon. They're behind the moon now. There is no signal to Earth. And before they disappeared behind the far side of the moon, this was the revolution that they had to undock on, on the far side of the moon, if they are to make that sweep over the landing site in the same timeline as the Apollo 11 would make it. And that's quite critical for the sun angles on the landing site, which are quite critical uh, there on the moon, uh, with its sharp shadows and definitions. Uh, now, they have to do it this time. They got a go for undocking. They will make that decision themselves. There will not be another uh, go from mission control in Houston. The constraint that Houston put on them was that if that slippage got up to six degrees, they should not undock. So if it's not up to six degrees, they will go ahead and undock uh, uh, around on the far side of the moon. And as a matter of fact, should be doing that uh, in about five minutes from now. Uh, is, is that right, Leo, do you think? Uh, yes, sir. I probably... Uh gave you the wrong impression. They were given a limit of six degrees of slippage, and when they lost communications, I believe the angle was at three. So if they do not exceed six, they'll probably go ahead and undock on their flight plan profile. All right, now, now if I can go back uh, again, uh, fellows, and put this in uh, my sort of layman's language, which uh, is befitting of a six-year-old, uh, the, the two spacecraft are held together, of course, by these docking rings, these latches that hold them together. Uh, when the command module and the lunar module are docked. Uh, some of those latches are released uh, in, in preparation for the undocking of the lunar module, and you've got just the docking rings uh, holding them together. Uh, that, those, that, those docking rings in the three-foot-long tunnel that, uh, that is between the hatches at the top of the command module and the top of the lunar module, those hatches have to be uh, firm and strong, of course, so that the individual spacecraft can be pressurized. In between there, they depressurize the tunnel under normal circumstances to, to, so that this pressure that you're talking about, Leo, will not uh, force those rings together in any small maneuvers they make in, in testing their rockets before undocking, which is what they were doing. But now in testing those rockets, because they could not get all that pressure out and decided to go ahead with I believe it's three and a half pounds pressure per square inch instead of the zero pressure they'd like. Uh, they got it down as far as three and a half, but they still got that much because they couldn't. When they tested the rockets, apparently there's a shifting between the two spacecraft, which is putting that pressure on the rings. As long as that shifting stays down below six per, uh, degrees, why they feel it'd be all right and the pressure on those rings would not be so much as to damage those rings so they could not redock. Uh, I don't know if that's simplified it any, but uh, it's, it, it reads to me. Is that, is that right, would you say, Leo? 
Uh, yes, sir. At this time, all 12 of those docking latches are released, so the only thing holding the vehicle together is the preload on the docking probe that's inserted into the drogue on the lunar module. And uh, uh, this shifting, we don't think it's going to probably damage the, the docking rings any, but it's putting a side load onto the capture latches of the probe, uh, which may prove to be a problem. And I pretty sure this is what the NASA and the North American engineering concern is, is the, the capture latch of the probe itself, not the docking rings of the two vehicles. And uh, as to why they have the problem in uh, depressurizing, we'll get to that uh, in a moment. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment.